both look young. We've been doing this for a while. So let's start on the, uh, the AI bubble. Uh, it's a term that gets tossed out there a lot, but is it a bubble? And how would you even quantify a tech bubble? I don't think it is a bubble. I think it's a it's basically one com company dominating now with NVIDIA. And I would argue, and we can get into this later, that they are actually not even uh, valued in a bubblicious way at the moment, given their future expectations and where they might be going. So if you kind of set them aside, like point to me all the companies, these like so-called like dozens of dot com, you know, IPOs that, that we saw back in the day, like in 98, 99, point me to the, you know, 200 X PE multiples where these public companies are trading at, even in the private markets. I mean, I, I, I just don't see it. I don't, I don't see that evidence. So there's a lot of excitement for sure. I think the, the excitement is justified. I think there's a lot of investment that's going on right now. And we're, st we're, we're getting to the point in the story where people are sort of saying, Oh, well, you know, we've been investing for 18 months now since chat GPT came out. And so like, where's the evidence that this is really, um, helping companies, where's the revenue. Um, and with the exception of maybe like meta, which has obviously juiced its, its, its revenue and earnings by the big investment that they've made in the, in the NVIDIA chips, we haven't seen it elsewhere. And, and so therefore people are saying, therefore it's a bubble, therefore India, uh, you know, NVIDIA, you know, there's been two double, triple orders. This thing's about to crash and fall in space. But, you know, I, I just don't agree. I, 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 I just think uh, it, there's a longer time horizon playing out here. And the markets are being much more rational in how they're pricing companies today relative to dot com. I purposely buried your NVIDIA analysis and all my questions at the end, Eric, so people will listen to this because I know you've been really <laughs> talking about NVIDIA, so it's a little, uh, I'm not trying to trick anyone, I just want to save like the real awesome stuff to the end. Um, but okay, so it's not a bubble, I hear you, but are you seeing signs of overvaluation? I look at, uh, what, about a week ago, we got a downgrade on, on ServiceNow. Uh, and the play on ServiceNow, great company, Bill McDermott, uh, top executive, but the play on ServiceNow, about a month ago, AI play, big AI build out, they're a winner. But the downgrade, I think it was Guggenheim, suggested something otherwise. I mean, do you think more of those downgrades are coming because these stocks have come too far too fast and that AI profit realization may not be coming uh, so quickly? Well, I, I like ServiceNow, I, I think it's, it, it hasn't gotten the pixie dust, uh, I don't think, sprinkled on it. In fact, in some ways, um, you know, the, the, the repricing that we've seen in big uh, SaaS names like Adobe, ServiceNow, uh, Salesforce, this uh, just in the past quarter. I think it's, I think that that's been a result of uh, CIOs reallocating budget this year away from, you know, upgrades to whatever the current SaaS system that is that they're using in favor of, of putting dollars towards uh, investing in AI. So. I don't. I don't see that. And when I look around at other companies that are so, you know, so-called AI companies like Palantir, yeah, they've had a great run off of their like maybe December twenty twenty-two lows, uh, and I'm sure there's some AI hype mixed in there. But I don't find like the the valuations like a PE basis. Truist Securities kept its $140 price objective and buy rating on NVIDIA stock unchanged on Wednesday. This confirmation follows NVIDIA's June 18, 2024, accomplishment of becoming the top-ranked corporation in the world by market capitalization. According to Truist's findings, attaining the pinnacle of market capitalization has no detrimental impact on future investment returns. In its most recent research note, the company explores what causes a stock to outperform, especially when seen through the prism of a price to earnings, P slash E valuation framework. Truist emphasized that NVIDIA has the capacity to continue outperforming, mostly due to organic sales growth that boosts earnings per share, EPS. Strong demand for NVIDIA's Blackwell product, as seen by industry contacts, including component buyers and dealers, continues to support this view. Truist's position is unaltered. The company is sticking to its earlier projections and price target for NVIDIA. The analyst's assessment highlights the optimism around NVIDIA's growth trajectory and highlights the company's capacity to grow, even if it has already attained a substantial market value. 
The emphasis on NVIDIA's Blackwell demand is especially significant because it suggests strong demand and possible revenues that might support the company's expansion in the future. Truist's belief in the stock's investment appeal seems to be reinforced by NVIDIA's market position and encouraging industry input. In conclusion, Truist Securities restates its bullish assessment of NVIDIA, predicting that the company's expansion will be driven by robust product demand and ensuing profitability growth. However, first of all, thank you for watching the entire way through. It takes a lot of work and time to create these videos, so if you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support will greatly aid in our growth. Yeah, they're probably uh, they're they're applying over at NVIDIA, which brings us to uh, one of our final topics here. Uh, your call uh, on NVIDIA, sir. I, I saw some posts out there on X land. You, you were calling for or are calling. You think a, a six trillion dollar market cap for NVIDIA is possible? Yeah, possible this year. And so this year, the reason is, yeah, by the end of the year. And here, here's my hold on, hold, my on hold, hold on, hold on a second. So wait, Nvidia is a three point two trillion dollar company, and you see you see six trillion by the end of the year. I I could see this thing hitting up you know between two hundred and two fifty per share by the end of this year, uh, and so the reason my, my the reason is that um, in the last five years, if you go back and look at what you know how the forward price earnings multiple has has varied for Nvidia over that five year period. Uh, you know, it, it, and this is true for most stocks. Like you, you go through these like ups and downs constantly, where there's this like euphoric reaction to maybe they have this like incredible earnings report, and suddenly like the, the company becomes very expensive on a go forward multiple basis, and then they have like a more humdrum earnings report, and suddenly they you know those forward multiples drop dramatically, and despite the fact that obviously the stock price for nvidia has like just been ripping for over a year now since like may of 2023 and it's i don't know it tripled last year and i think it's doubled this year um the forward multiple has actually been below the mean for most of that move uh in other words like on a go forward basis it's almost like wall street has i uh, thought this was going to be like kind of like okay they had another good quarter but and that it's going to slow down significantly from here and we're going to kind of go back to you know uh, you know very low levels that and, and in terms of like how they were pricing this thing they just were not and and yet like over that five-year period there have been three times where the forward multiple has gotten up to like uh there was one time it was like 55 times forward earnings one it was like 63 times uh forward earnings when it peaked out and there was one time where it almost got to 70 times uh, forward earnings, mm -hmm. uh, and then it kind of quickly receded. Most of most of, of the last year, this thing has been like one standard deviation below the mean on a go forward basis. And just right now, this thing is about thirty nine times forward earnings, forty times, which puts it right at the mean. So, m my belief is that you know we're now kind of going up again with Nvidia, and I it would not surprise me uh, to. Uh, that we see another um, strong earnings report this fall from NVIDIA. The $140 price target that has been maintained is based on the firm's evaluation of NVIDIA's worth and future potential. In other recent news, a top producer of AI chips has drawn interest from investors as a result of a number of developments. The company's pre-market share price increase of 1.1% was attributed to its second quarter revenue report exceeding forecasts. A rise in price target was made for NVIDIA's shares by key bank capital markets because of strong product demand, especially in the data center industry. But NVIDIA's recommendation was reduced by New Street Research from buy to neutral due to worries about rivals gaining market share and revenue growth slowing down. At the 2024 annual meeting, NVIDIA's shareholders accepted a number of significant motions, including as the ratification of PricewaterhouseCoopers LP, the company's independent registered accounting firm, and the election of all 12 director nominees. They also gave their advisory assent to executive remuneration.
On the other hand, NVIDIA is going to be charged with antitrust in France for the first time due to purportedly anti-competitive actions. The second quarter earnings season and the impending U.S. inflation data will be critical in determining if the high-flying megacap stocks like NVIDIA's prices are reasonable. Cantor Fitzgerald raised the price target for NVIDIA's stock and kept its overweight rating, highlighting the company's contribution to technical innovation and lower processing costs. These advancements demonstrate how NVIDIA's position in the tech industry is dynamic and ever-changing. Nonetheless, what are your thoughts on NVIDIA's stock? Is it worth buying at the moment? Please share your opinions with us in the comments below, and don't forget to share your NVIDIA valuation with us. The S&P 500 just notching its 36th record close of the year on Tuesday, and it's moving higher still today. The hype around AI has been a big driver of the rally, and according to a BlackRock report, we should not expect this to change too much anytime soon. Joining us now on this is our very own Inez Ferre. Inez. Yeah, Madison, and BlackRock strategists are comparing the transformation related to AI, the energy transition, and the rewiring of supply chains to the industrial revolution. That's because of the massive amounts of capital spending that is happening in this space, with estimates of AI data center investments, for example, growing by 60 to 100 percent annually in the coming years. Now, what does this mean for investing? Well, strategists see the AI theme continuing to drive returns, with some broadening out into other sectors besides tech. And while investors may be tempted to stay on the sidelines for now with $6.15 trillion in money market funds, these strategists are saying the best returns will come by stepping out of cash and leaning into risk. You have to be very selective. Fundamentals matter, and you have to find the pockets of strength. One of the things that investors want to see is a broadening out of the markets. NVIDIA and big tech have done a lot of the heavy lifting. Now, these strategists are saying that the broadening is happening in AI and AI beneficiaries. So, for example, energy, utilities, industrial, healthcare. These are some of the sectors that are set to benefit from AI, either through the build-out or through the adoption of AI. And you can see, for example, utilities, we've talked a lot about, you guys. Year-to-date utilities, ETF is up more than 8%. Last year, it was down 7%. A lot of this has to do with powering the AI data centers, the electrification of the U.S., and it's not just data centers. It's also chip factories, reshoring of supply chains here to the U.S. So by broadening out, they're meaning that this is broadening into other sectors that are going to benefit from that AI adoption and build out. It may seem hard to believe, but Hemant Mohapatra, a former engineer for AMD, revealed on his X account that he was present when AMD missed the opportunity to lead in the nascent GPU industry. He also recalled the merging negotiations between the two companies. NVIDIA, one of the biggest names in the tech field today, was almost sold to its current greatest rival AMD at some point when it was just getting started. Of course, this didn't happen due to Jensen Huang's sole condition to be the CEO of the merged company. To find out what AMD did in response to Jensen Huang's desire to keep NVIDIA's GPUs bound to the closed-source CUDA model, let's first catch up on the most recent news from NVIDIA and AMD, as well as the stock market. We regularly post updates about the biggest shifts and catalysts in the market, so be sure to click the subscribe button to ensure you don't miss it. All right, back to today's video. Requires ongoing spending, as far as the eye can see, with NVIDIA, and that's an underappreciated element of this. This is not just selling chips. 100%. I mean, this is the substrate of AI, right? And so it's the primitive. You have to have compute and you have to have data. And so, again, um, I think everybody's got to, we all know, We've come a long way fast, Scott. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling people at home to shove it all on the table and go all in today. Our net exposures are 60%. What does that mean? Again, reminder for folks at home. That means I have six out of $10 at risk long the market in our hedge fund. I'm not all in. I'm not 100% net long, right? And at the start of 23, remember, when the rest of the world thought the market was going to crash, we were all in. Right. So I think you have to pay attention to prices. You have to assess risk reward. But there is no doubt in my mind that NVIDIA should be at the top of your list of technology allocations. 
Over the course of the last half decade, there has been a notable divergence of opinion regarding Apple's stock. While many observers might AMD CEO at the time, Hector Ruiz, had a different outlook and chose to take a chance and buy the upstart rival ATI, a Canadian semiconductor company. Hemant Mohapatra, a former engineer for AMD, stated that in the mid to late 2000s AMD was considering buying a semiconductor company because it saw an opportunity in GPUs. The management considered NVIDIA, while Phil Park, another long-serving AMD employee, acknowledged that he never met Mohapatra in person and that he disagrees with him on a number of issues, he corroborated Huang's major requirement to become the CEO and verified Mohapatra's recollections. In his memories, Mohapatra stated that, although most gamers held the company's graphic cards in high regard, ATI held a much larger market share. He also stated that AMD never saw NVIDIA as being on the same level as ARM or Intel, and that they never anticipated NVIDIA to have such potential. However, all of this has clearly changed as AI is thriving and NVIDIA's GPUs and AI hyperscalers are in insane demand, dominating the entire tech industry, leaving AMD trying to catch up. Mohab Petra's memoirs are fascinating and well worth your time because they contain numerous revelations and assertions that have never been discussed before. It's much too late for AMD to regret not caving into Huang's demands about the early chip war of the 2000s, but is that the end for AMD? What might come up next for the tech pioneer? Let's find out. Hello everyone and welcome back to Investing Tutorial.